Neogen takes great care to ensure the integrity of the data we collect from many sources across the country. As these data can vary widely, they should not be considered typical of all grain harvested. The mycotoxin levels we report are intended to assist our industry partners in developing their risk assessment programs. Detecting problems before commingling or processing can help avoid quality issues and financial losses. Welcome to the Monday Mycotoxin and Crop Report for July 25th, presented by Neogen, a world leader in providing solutions for food and animal safety. This week's highlights, winter wheat harvest passes the three-quarter post, big aflatoxin year, drought worries, Tony's tech tip. The majority of the country's wheat, barley, and corn growing states had normal temperatures last week. Exceptions were the southeast and southwest, where warmer temperatures swelled thermometers, and the Pacific Northwest, which experienced cooler temperatures. Less than two inches of rain fell in most areas of the country, although up to six inches of rain fell in parts of the coastal Carolinas, Virginia, and Indiana, Illinois, and Iowa. The long-term forecast continues to point to mostly hot and relatively dry conditions. The USDA's July 19th crop report shows that just over three quarters of winter wheat has been harvested. Northwestern producing wheat regions are just beginning to put combines in the field. Spring wheat is nearly all headed out, and 69% is in good to excellent condition. 7% remains poor to very poor. Barley is 96% headed out, ahead of normal. Barley conditions are unchanged from last week, 73% good to excellent and 4% poor to very poor. We have received confirmed reports for Don and Wheat in Kansas, Missouri, Georgia, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania. We've also received a report of Don and Barley in Delaware. The USDA's crop bulletin shows that just over three quarters of corn is in good to excellent condition and 5% poor to very poor. The percentage of corn in the silking stage roared past the halfway mark and remains ahead of the five-year average. Heat units continue above average, which has kept crop development ahead of the five-year average. Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Texas are behind normal development. Most other states are ahead. The July 19th drought map shows areas of drought in parts of the South, Midwest, and Western United States. Dry weather in parts of Michigan have prompted predictions of poor yields. Roughly one-third of corn in Ohio and Michigan is located in drought areas. In Tennessee, it's 13%. Dry weather makes conditions ripe for aflatoxin and fumonisin in corn. During this critical mid-season growing period, timely rains hold the key for crop yield and quality. We have a confirmed report from new crop corn in Texas with aflatoxin levels greater than 100 parts per billion. We examine weather patterns and the USDA's crop report each week to bring you updates on crop progress, condition and harvest, along with reported mycotoxin levels. Back again this week, Neogen's Director of Technical Services, Tony Lupo, to answer the question, how many times should I probe a truck of grain to get a representative sample? Questions on probing are very, very common, but critically important to make sure that the sample is in fact representative. So the USDA will recommend that a multi-tier probe be used, and each of those probes have individual compartments or tiers within them. Depending upon the size of vessel, the number of compartments can vary. For a hopper bottom truck, anywhere between 12 and 20 compartments, which is generally about five to seven probes. For trucks, 11 or 12 compartments. For box cars, 12 compartments. For hopper cars, 20 compartments. And for barges and bay boats, 20 compartments. Following these recommendations by the USDA will ensure that you have a representative sample and that the results that you generate are in fact reliable. If you have a question you'd like Tony to answer, please submit it to this email address with Tony in the subject line. Thanks for watching this week's Monday Mycotoxin and Crop Report. We invite you to use our free NeoMyco app to keep in touch with us, and that includes reporting mycotoxin levels in your area. We welcome your feedback and encourage you to share our report with others who may find value in it. Please contact a Neogen representative with any questions about our latest solutions, including Reveal Q Plus Max for aflatoxin, the first in an exciting new line of quantitative, water-based tests that will eventually perform all six major mycotoxin tests from a single water-based extraction. Have a great week!